right? So let's go ahead and um, see how we can actually look at this in a more intuitive way. Now, remember, anytime you want to show that a matrix has a linearly independent columns or is invertible, what we do, for example, we had this equation of AX equal to B. We want to say that this equation has a unique answer or prove that A has a linearly independent column or prove that A is invertible. What we do is that uh, we're going to write AX equal to zero and show that X equal to zero is the only solution. So here X is a vector. But the same thing we should do here. I'm going to write this, this KKT matrix times XZ equal to zero. And I want to see that under what case X equal to zero and Z equal to zero uh, are the only solutions. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and multiply that. We get 2A transpose A times X plus C transpose Z is equal to zero. That's the first equation. And C times X equal to um, is zero. Right, C times X plus zero times C equal to zero. So that's the second equation. Go ahead and calculate the transpose of this. You get X transpose, C transpose is equal to zero, right? Good. Now, now that you have this one, go ahead and multiply the first equation by X transpose. Let's see what we get. You get two X transpose, A transpose, AX, plus x transpose c transpose z equal to zero, right? This one, we have seen it numerous times, is nothing but two norm of ax squared. What this, what is this one? I said x transpose c transpose zero. So this is nothing but zero. But wait, norm of ax is zero. Therefore, ax is zero, right? So AX is zero, very good. So now it's very interesting. AX is zero and CX is zero, right? CX is zero because of this. And AX is zero because of this. You can also look at this derivation that I have here. Therefore, the stack matrix of A and C times X, call it L tilde if you would like, right? X equal to zero. So X equal to zero, is going to be the only solution if this stack matrix has a linearly independent columns, right? If the A tilde has linearly independent columns, as we have seen this one in a multi-objective list score and also the uh, normal list score or ordinary list score, right? So that's the first thing, right? Very good. We prove this one, that this stack matrix, this condition should have a linearly independent columns. Now, so every time you forget, you can actually go ahead and write this set of equations. Now, now if I assume that AX is equal to zero, we drive it here. If we assume that AX is equal to zero, therefore what's gonna happen here? If AX is equal to zero, let me change the color. This is zero. Therefore this expression is zero. But then for then C transpose Z is equal to zero, right? I want to say that Z equal to zero is the only solution here. Therefore, C transpose should have linearly independent columns. Therefore, C should have a linearly independent rows, right? When C should have linearly independent rows. Do I have this condition somewhere? Yes, right? If I go up, C should have a linearly independent rows, right? So C should be either wide or a square. And that's how you see actually this proof, right? The intuitive understanding. So anytime you're in doubt, we just go um, approach this problem as usual. We go ahead and set this um, matrix times the vector equal to zero. And we prove that if, the zero and zero want to be the only solution or zero vector want to be the only solution, then what are the conditions on the matrix A and C, okay? So here I wrote it here that if the above condition is valid, then the KKT on the matrix is invertible. So it should be the KKT matrix, right? And the KKT matrix is invertible. And the solution is calculated as I 
uh, gave you before, right? The inverse of that. So now let's take an example here, solution of least known problem. This is a problem you see a lot in literature. We want to minimize the norm of x squared such that or subject to that cx is equal to d. Okay, this is okay, like it's a normal least squared problem. Let's see, this is similar to this. We want to minimize this one. What is a? a is identity. What is b? b is zero. Okay, now go ahead and uh, write the optimality condition and then we are set. So here I told you that we need i and c to have a linear independent columns and we need c to have a linear independent rows. But this one we know that this is the case. Why is that? Because i is this. Right? So I always have linearly independent columns. So even if the C has linearly dependent columns, still this stack matrix has linearly independent columns. So this one we know that, right? So that's what I wrote here. So however, I C has always linearly independent columns. So we need C to have a linearly independent rows. Okay. Now, uh, one thing we have D as it is, uh, and D also is set to be zero. So go ahead and write the optimality condition. What was the optimality condition? Was 2a transpose a, c transpose c zero, xz, 2a transpose b, and d. Okay, so we said that a is identity, so this become 2i. c transpose remains c transpose c remains c, zero is zero, b is zero, a transpose b is zero. Right, b is zero, and then this. All right, so let's just multiply and simplify. When you multiply that 2i times x with a 2x plus c transpose z equal to 0 and cx is equal to d. So from here, let's go ahead and write x in terms of z. You will get what? If you move one to the other side, you get x is equal to negative one half from equation one. From this one, you get x is equal to negative one half c transpose z. Go ahead and plug that one in equation two, right? In the set of x, you get c negative one half c, c transpose z equal to d, right? So from here, you um, remember, c, we need to have the c to have a linearly independent rows. This is another condition. So if c has a linearly independent rows, then c, c transpose is invertible. We prove this one in some of the, one of the videos related to pseudo inverse. If you haven't watched that one, please go and watch that one first. We talked about the gram matrix. We talked about that if A has a linearly independent columns, then A transpose A has linearly independent columns and is invertible. If A has a linearly independent rows, then A A transpose is invertible. Okay, the same thing is here. So we must have again C times C transpose to be invertible. Therefore, C should be right invertible or should have a linearly independent rows. Okay, so that's another indication. So from here, we calculate the z from here, right? Now we don't care about z, we care about x, right? So go ahead and plug this z that you find this equation three in here, right? This negative one half and this negative two, they cancel out each other. And what you get is this, x is equal to c transpose, c, c transpose negative inverse times d. But what is this? I want you to have an intuitive understanding. What is this? This is nothing but the pseudo inverse of C, right inverse of C. C has a linearly independent rows. Therefore, C is right invertible. This is the equation of pseudo inverse of a white matrix, right? So X is equal to C pseudo inverse times D, right? Very good. Great. Now, um, that's um, how to find the solution of least known problem. Now, if you want to write this one in a QR factorization, when we were talking about these pseudo inverses, um, I talk about how to find the um, QR factorization of these pseudo inverse equations. For example, when A, matrix A, has a linearly independent columns or is left invertible, then uh, the pseudo inverse is A transpose A inverse A transpose Right. So in that case, what we did was that we let A to be equal to QR and then calculate the QR expression for this pseudo inverse. 
for um, the case of the white matrices or right invertible matrices, we saw that the pseudo inverse was A transpose, A, A transpose inverse. What we did in that case was we let A transpose to be equal to QR, right? If you do that, you realize that the pseudo inverse is equal to Q negative R transpose. We have, I have this expression in one of the videos. You can also go ahead and drive this one. Just let A transpose to be equal to QR and just uh, put it here. So like, for example, here, um, you get QR and then A is gonna be R transpose, Q transpose, and then A transpose is gonna be QR, right? So this is um, orthogonal matrix, and then you can go ahead and simplify this one. This is gone. So you get R inverse, R negative transpose. So this will cancel and you get Q times R negative transpose. So the X in terms of the QR factorization is nothing but Q times R negative transpose times D. But what is this R negative transpose? Just wanna make sure that people not confused. This one is this, R negative one, R inverse transpose, or R inverse, R transpose inverse. Okay, good. So now let's see how to find them. What's the algorithm to find the least norm solution via, via QR factorization? Okay, so C is a P by N matrix uh, with linearly independent rows, remember, and B is a P by one vector. First, compute the QR factorization of C transpose. Why? C has a linearly independent rows, right? The same way I show you. If A has a linearly independent rows, you let A transpose to be QR. That's what we did. So C has a linear independent rows, let uh, C transpose to be QR. So find the QR trans uh, factorization of C transpose, right? Okay, good. Now, let me write this equation here and explain more. So we have X equal to Q or negative transpose D. Go ahead and set this part to Y. Solve this equation y equal to r negative transpose times d, right? We want to find y, our goal is to find y. So go ahead and multiply both sides by r transpose from left. Is that hard? No, because r is, r is upper triangular matrix. r is an upper triangular matrix, right? So we can solve this one easily using back substitution, right? So here, if you do that, you get R transpose Y is equal to D. So from here, solve for Y. Solve for Y. Great. Now that you have Y, X is easy. Then solve for X using X equal to Q times Y. So we never need to actually invert the matrix here, right? So that's how you find this list norm solution using QR factorization. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. In the next video, I would like to talk about the Cholesky factorization, nonlinear list square, and then perhaps we talk about the Newton method for convex optimization problem. Thank you so much.